Uh, this has to do with, uh, to a certain varying degree, uh, the concept of having a patron deity. Uh, I know this is, as uh, far as I'm aware, to a certain degree it's modern. Uh, in the past, I mean, yes, uh, historically there were what were referred to as cults of, uh, say, Odin or Tyr or Thor. Uh, groups of people who more specifically worshipped or, or more thoroughly venerated a specific god or goddess, uh, more so than the others. But it it isn't done in any kind of a monotheistic manner to where it's like, well, this god is the one and only god. It's more of, I can relate to this god more and better which is why I choose this god to, you know, to a certain very degree, kind of be my own personal god, like your, uh, you know, guardian spirit, sort of, uh, if you will. Which uh, isn't necessarily wrong. I mean, finding one specific god or goddess that you can identify with uh, more so than the others. Uh, but you should not exclude uh, all of the other gods or goddesses simply because you can identify with them as good. Uh, that I, I definitely wouldn't recommend personally. Uh, also, uh, I know there is the uh, there are uh, different sects and uh, cults, uh, if you will, and followings within uh, the heathen movement. Some of which is definitely very modern because it is not historically. Uh, found that are factual, there, there isn't any evidence of it, uh, which is things like uh, uh, Lokians or, or you know, uh, Thersians or Thersatru, uh, Arakatru, uh, Fenrians, uh, someone who, you know, pretty much exclusives, uh, exclusively follows, you know, Loki or Fenrir or the Thurs in general, you know, the, the giant or, or Etin, Jotin races or tribes, should I say. Uh, within the lore. Uh, that wasn't done historically. Uh, there, there weren't followers uh, of the enemies of the gods, if you will, uh, because that was, well, that's kind of unheard of. Why would you, uh, why would you worship the uh, enemy uh, or enemies uh, of your gods? You know, that's not exactly something that's heard of. Uh, but also I do no, uh, I personally have met and spoken to different people, some of which are, are uh, basically Thersians. Uh, they, they follow, uh, you know, Thersa true, basically. Uh, not that they're Thersian themselves, I misspoke. <laughs> they uh, basically follow Thersa true, you know, followers of, of the, the Thurs. Uh, to a certain degree, that stems from they feel that there should be order uh, and chaos, you know, a balance between the two within heathenry. You know, they kind of feel like, well, not everyone can worship just the gods because then you're promoting purely order without any form of chaos, which is an unbalance within the universe uh, to a certain degree is how they look at it. Uh, and, you know, some of them are just, just shit stirrers. There, there are some that are like that. They're just assholes that want to stir up shit. You know, there, there are some of those. I've run, I've run across a few of them online. Uh, not in person, but uh, but online. But I, I have met some people um, online and in person who uh, most, uh, more exclusively, if you will, follow, uh, you know, the Thurs and Etins, uh, who are, man, they're, you know, they're good people. They're, they're just like you or me and anybody else. They just feel more drawn to that of the the tribes of giants, you know, the, the Jotun and the uh, the Etin and the Thurs. Uh, why specifically? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't really bothered to ask, you know, why specifically do you feel more drawn to these? But, uh, when it comes to, uh, comes to that also, part of, uh, part of their veneration of these beings has to do with simply showing the respect, kind of like with, uh, you know, a shark or a bear or a lion. It's not that you just, oh, I love and I worship this being, but you're going to give it its due and proper respect as a powerful being of nature. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to make it a point to keep my distance from a bear. Uh, 
you know, I, I know to respect that animal. I know what it's capable of. I know that it's more powerful than I am. So I'm going to give it its due and proper respect. Whether I like it or not, I will respect it. Uh, to a certain degree, this is part of this. Also, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm losing a little bit of focus here. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but also, there not all of the the Thurs and Etin and Jotun uh, are bad. Uh, there is some variance within the lore. Uh, the I never can figure out how to how pronounce it. The, the Norina Society, I think. Uh, they, they did the Asatru and Ognisteta. Uh, they talk about this to a certain degree that uh, some of the, the members of the tribe, of the giant tribes, were uh, basically tainted by the, the black rhyme of the, you know, basically kind of like the river of corruption almost, if you will. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're mingled with it in and of itself, you know, without having it, you know, diluted or say, say, uh, washed away from you, it will, uh, poison you, if you will, it'll, it'll taint you, make you corrupted and evil, uh, and, uh, there, there is some lore to, to a certain degree, kind of seems like would back that up, that some of the, the giants got some of this poison, if you will, within them, and it's just in their blood now, because it's, it's part of them. And that's why they're they're bad and evil and purely and solely destructive. But not all of them are this way. I mean, uh, Skadi, uh, the goddess Skadi, and she is recognized as a goddess counted amongst the dwellers within Asgard. Uh, she is clearly not evil. Uh, she is a very dutiful daughter. Uh, she felt that she needed to avenge her father's death. Uh, you know, being you know, even though, in my personal opinion, he had it coming, he deserved it. But she was again being a loyal and dutiful daughter, uh, wanting to to avenge her father's death. That is perfectly honorable. I have full and complete respect for Scotty. Uh, personally, I uh, I count her among one of my uh, more personally well-respected goddesses because I can relate to her because of this. Uh, you know, I, I've made blow to her before. Uh, also, you have Mimir, uh, who is basically uh, Odin's uncle. He is a Jotun. Uh, you know, he is a giant, and he is Odin's most trusted advisor and counselor. Uh, he, he goes to consult the, the head of Mimir often. Uh, obviously, he is not evil or bad. Uh, he's probably more neutral, if anything. He just simply wants to promote balance. Uh, the mother of Thor, uh, um, you know, basically, basically Earth itself, or, or an Earth goddess, uh, you know, depending on exactly how you want to translate the lore, uh, she was considered to be a, you know, a Jotun or Etin, you know, a giant uh, or giantess. Obviously, she wasn't necessarily bad or evil either. I um, mean, look at Thor. Thor hates, loathes, and despises uh, pretty much any and all giants. Uh, you know, he, he uh, you know he has no qualms about killing them, just smashing them with Mjolnir. Even though technically he is, I guess you could say, about three quarters uh, giant himself. But I've talked about this with other people. In my opinion, it's not that they're a different race per se. Uh, the the different tribes of the giants, they are just that, different tribes, like uh, amongst our European peoples. You have the Aesir and Vanir, let's say they're, uh, you know, Norwegians and Swedes. Then you have, uh, you know, all of your different tribes of giants. They're, uh, you know, Russians or Germans or English, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's not that they're a different race of being, per se, but a different tribe of being. Uh, so I look at it that way. Um, I hope I've stemmed some some good points, some good talking points on this, and uh, tried to kind of clarify a few things in my uh, personal opinions on this. Uh, just a little food for thought. Uh, hopefully this is of interest. Uh, all right.